very welcome to the penultimate stage of Trino Adriatico 2021. We're on our way back down to the seaside. This time, Lido de Fermo on the Adriatic coast is the destination for the riders. 169 kilometers in total. It's the final road race stage, the penultimate day of action. And this is what they face today. It's all about the castles. Castel Raimondo as they slash uh, east towards the Adriatic coast today. It is an undulating first part of the stage. Then after 94 kilometers, the riders reach the finishing circuits. One long lap of 30.4 kilometers, and then four short loops of 11.2 kilometers. Just one classified climb along the way at Monte San Justo after just over 100 kilometers of racing. A few uh, sea craft that haven't had too much attention of the late, all packed up waiting for some attention from their owners. Hopefully within the next couple of months. Meanwhile, the riders on this uh, final road stage, the penultimate stage, just the time trial to come after today. Final hit out, final opportunity, perhaps for glory. And that's why six riders have ventured clear thoughts and dreams of uh, World Tour glory today. A couple of stage wins in Tour de Provence as well. Rider down, just look up from my screen and see one of the riders from EF Education, Nippo, and that looks like a very, very painful arrival on the tarmac. Three laps and one kilometer uh, remain. Meanwhile, the race leaders further up the road and uh, well into that grippy little climb now. It's all looked very cool, calm and collected among the main peloton, but uh, they need resources now. You feel they won't be just leaving it up to one rider from one team. On a flat stage, when the stage is the summer finish, summer finish, and it's where it's right, it rolls through. Velasco looking across, waiting for the attack. And if you're waiting for it, you might as well do it. Of course, everybody wants to do the second attack, don't they? No one ever wants to do the first one because you feel like that tends to get closed down. And then that creates a bit of a sting. The attack coming from behind, and he's put himself on the overlap on the inside of the wheel. Backhand knows how to play this one. Fills the gap, third in line. And the man with the heat on his uh, back of his neck right now is Nelson Oliveira. Doesn't want to be the man to lead it out. 800 metres remaining. Velasco at the back. Van Moore in front of him, the 23-year-old Belgian. Backhand's the oldest rider in the group. The other Belgian, he's 35. Mads Wurtz in the green jersey, leader of the King of the Mountains competition. What's he like in a flat road? Well, he's a useful time trialist. Is he a useful fast finisher? And he's looking over his shoulder track style. Oliveira is going to have the pleasure, dubious pleasure of that, of leading them down into the final series of turns. Left and then flick right onto the seafront. We're waiting for the arrival of the riders on this sixth and penultimate stage of Torino Adriatico. Oliveira is going to lead out the sprint for the line. Mads Wurtz in prime position in second place. Backlund's third up. Van Moore and Velasco coming through the run from behind. We launch to the line now. A sprint is well and truly on. It's going to start fast. Nelson Oliveira had to do it that way. Here comes Mads Wurtz up and around him to try and get there. Velasco coming with the run. Van Moore is there, thereabouts as well. Van Moore's going to get this one. I think it's going to be very, very tight. No, it's Mads Wurtz. Mads Wurtz gets it. Mads Wurtz Schmidt takes the victory on stage six. And what a sensation result that was for the breakaway group surviving clear of the bank peloton well it's too little too late for them they'll charge down and into the conclusion to decide who's going to finish uh, seventh on the day and it's leapens finally makes his way in and there's your finishing order Mads first gets the victory on stage six ahead of Brent Van Moore, Simone Velasco, Jan Bakkelans, Nelson Oliveira, Evans Leapens trailing the break in, head of the main peloton led in by Tim Merlier. Mats, you often attack in races, a long time that you didn't win a race. Were you hoping for this breakaway to work out today when you started? Uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was a hard start. First, I tried with two other guys, and that didn't. Uh, we didn't get away, and then uh, I got away second time with this group, and we worked really well together. And we all had in mind that uh, we had to go hard the whole way to, to kind of break the morale in the peloton, and, and we succeeded with that. Uh, we worked really well together, and it was a super hard stage. But uh, but I felt good when we when we came into the final. A relaxed day in the sunshine for, for the overall race leader. Uh, for Wef and our disappointment, really, that he didn't manage to get to sprint for potentially a second stage victory of the week, but uh, 
safely in the lead of the points classification ahead of the final stage tomorrow. Are you disappointed that it was not a bunch sprint finish today? Uh, yeah, not really. I think uh, yesterday was a really hard day and uh, also uh, I felt tired uh, this morning so uh, we decided to uh, to let the bunch decide and not not pull ourselves. Uh, and I must say, uh, the breakaway was also really strong because a lot of teams, they tried, but uh, they were just uh, stronger and they stayed in front. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, it was also good to have a more easy day for me and my teammates and then uh, give it one more go tomorrow.